really great professional project management is not about saving the day. There's brilliant things, brilliant decisions are made in the heat of the moment sometimes. But if you're relying on that on project to project, you're really putting yourself in a poor position. The real PM work is in not needing the last minute save, right? Isn't that what we're all after? Strong companies, lasting partnerships, Powerful events. Welcome to the Experience Builders Podcast. Chris, it's good to see you again, man. Good to see you too, buddy. It's been a little bit of time since we spoke, but how is how is summer treating you? Uh, summer is just zipping by. So, uh, which is always the case when it feels like good things are happening. So. Yeah. Uh, I suppose that's a positive. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> you guys just wrapped up a, uh, you know, team gathering and leadership meeting uh, in Orlando. How did that go? We did. We did. You know what? It was great. It was the, so we had about 15 of us. So senior project managers and above uh, were in for, uh, we really packed a lot into a week. There was, uh, we use a particular software to manage our, extensive rental inventory. So they happen to have their annual conference called FlexCon going on in Orlando. So I had four or five people at that on Monday and Tuesday. We had the Infocom show going in, which was very active for us. Wednesday and Thursday, we had our company two-day powwow, which is really um, diving into um, a lot of stuff about processes and systems as this is our year to build back on a lot of that. So uh group dinners, um, private breakout lunches and, um, every, anyway, it was, it was terrific. Uh, never had enough time to get to everything we could, but we admitted going in that there was going to be a finite list of things to accomplish. And, uh, and I feel like we really did well. So it's great. Good. Glad you guys got to get together. Um, what is the you know intent with most of those? You guys do those biannually. Is that right? So we do quarterly meetings. Um, my job is to present the State of the Union, and there's some shorter-term goals that happen. This, um, the mid-year meeting, uh, we do try to get together, uh, at least with the the higher uh, higher up folks, at least twice a year. So the intent is one in Orlando, one in Las Vegas. It was great for many of the, the Las Vegas people have never been to this facility here. They recognize a lot of the same components both facilities are about the same size um even in the carpeting and the and the wall colors are are the same so um it's different but familiar and for them it i think for some of the first timers here they they were like wow there's really a whole nother world uh other than the one we're used to so for those that you know first year people we've hired and uh some of the veterans that hadn't been here it was just I just love the energy and it's a big culture boost for everybody. So, uh, yeah, that's great. Happy. Always happy good to get together. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know that for today's topic, there's some inspiration drawn from Seth Godin, who is just fantastic. Great author. Um, really enjoyed some of the podcasts that I've heard from him in the past couple of years, especially. But uh, what, what inspired you about uh, what Seth Godin sent to you in your inbox the other day? I'm a long time more than a decade follower of follower of Seth and a lot of friends, uh, podcast, uh, experience builder listeners, I'm sure have heard me talk about him before. Um, and this is one of those, like, I'm sure a lot of the listeners, um, I struggled to make the time to listen to or read everything that I even sign up for. Right. So his, this came in the other morning and it was on project management, which is subject that's near and dear to me, subject near and dear to probably all of us these days. And it, and it just, the nickel dropped for me about um, just really seeing project management with a fresh set of eyes. It's, I think most of us, for most of us, it's always been about accomplishing a linear set of tasks to, to build the thing or deliver on a thing, product, service, some combination thereof. And this particular one, uh, this particular reference from Seth was um, just got me thinking about 
it's not about the thing and the stuff. It's not about, and in the business event world, I think listeners can agree. Usually, you know, whatever we're delivering ends in somebody saving the day because there's one, there's so many variables that you have little to no direct control over, you know, to, to, um, to, to chase down that missing graphic that was misdelivered or the missing crate or the client's last minute request or, you know, the product of a, of a customers that you're trying to integrate into the structure you built, but the dimensions were off. There's always something. And uh, what, what I was reminded of this week was um, really great professional project management is not about saving the day. It's, it's really lining up and having your systems and processes and resources in place that you're able to adjust for whatever it is that comes up. And it's, you know, there, there may be a pivot, but it's just business as usual. So um, I wish I'd read it uh, when everybody was still here for the mid-year meeting, because I, it would have been an interesting conversation to have because yeah. I've got, I've got great senior PMs and they're great at, solving problems. And yet, um, I think this, this reminded me, we need to take the discussion even further in our planning and our, in our systems in 2023. And you and I've talked about this before, Khalil, 2023 is really all about those blocking and tackling, um, written procedures and, uh, behaviors, um, as we move to 2024 and, and, hopefully take our game to a whole nother level of service for our partners. I, I read this memo article. I don't know what you want to call it. Is this something that you've shared with, with people? Well, Jerry McGuire would call it a manifesto. <laughs> you know, what was that line? For the it's not, it's a memo, a mission statement. No, yeah. I, you know, he, I just, it was kind of a bit of a rant, but, um, yeah. you know, I, I let you it know, was very succinct. I wouldn't call well, it a rant. So, um, it started off by saying, you know, you really start thinking about what's a project. A project is a promise, right? It really is about coordinating the unknowable future events to deliver something of value. And I think that's what started me off really seeing things a little different. I mean, let's think about it, Khalil. We project manage just so many things in our daily lives. You know, the meeting last week that we had was um, – was a project, right? There was airlines, there was traffic, there was weather, there was rides to coordinate. I don't care if you're building a permanent skyscraper building or it's the next podcast you and I are planning yeah. um, or, or you're cooking dinner for guests. It's, it's got to be managed. There's always an uncertainty because, you know, the truth is we're, we're dancing with future random events, yeah. often with other people, or like I said, the variables out of, uh, out of our control. Um, and there's a need for management of all of that because, you know, if you just leave the events to their own devices, you're probably not going to like the outcome. Right. So it requires, um, and I think in the business event, particularly in the trade show space, um, the unpredictable nature of future events means there's very often going to be speed bumps and that's the business that we're in. Um, so much of what we do is just, you know, we're paid to really respond because you can't control. There's no project manager, right, that has a perfect record. And um, what I liked that um, Seth Godin had said was, um, why isn't there a perfect record? Because the cost of being completely perfect in the face of the unknown is too high, right? He's not saying it can't be done. But what it would cost to make sure we cover for every contingency when you're out, you know, on site at some event venue, you, it, they just we they couldn't afford to hire us if we really were going to, you know, get the risk down to just fractional or single digit numbers. So, well, and when I heard that, Chris, yeah, I actually didn't think the line was. Uh, I'll, I'll reset it. I know you just said it, but. Um, no project manager has a perfect record because the cost of being completely perfect in the face of unknown of the unknown is too high. Yes. And 
I'd actually didn't even think about it from a revenue standpoint. I mean, I totally understand that, that it, it, we, you would have to pay an enormous amount of money to have everything go perfectly. But even just the toll that it takes on your mental capacity, on not being able to be with your family because you're dealing with so much uh, the project management space, it yeah. even got me thinking about just the start of this manifesto <laughs> that right. you wrote in a project is a promise. And really for the person that you're taking over for whether, it, whether you're the project manager or whether you're just managing a portion of that project, you've promised to do that. And what that's doing is it's giving them those costly things back. They're getting their time back with their family. They're getting the capacity to focus on what makes them good at their job. And it keeps them sharp. But when you fail to do it, now you're that cost, you're just transferring that cost back to them when they thought they'd offloaded it. Uh, maybe that's a little bit out there. But again, Seth, Seth Godin, like you said earlier, is just so phil philosophical with the way that he approaches things. He, you can take it in multiple ways. Well, it, this reminded me that if unexpected events in the work where you're doing happen to you more than the average, let's call it the expected rate, right? If you end up being better at finding excuses for why things have happened than a way to avoid needing an excuse, then those are signs that you probably would, would do well to have a more int intentional approach to how you do your work and how you approach the projects. Because, I mean, let's be honest, we're, most of us in business, we're fairly unsophisticated at, at the project management, but it is a skill that can be learned. And, you know, if you're an analytical person, I think you can, you can analyze and then reboot and deliver with strategy and technique that's going to improve the outcome, limit the surprises. I love that, you know, the, 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 the rant he went on, he it talked about really three hallmark signs of um, amateur hour in project management. And tell me if any of this sounds familiar. So number one, if you've got lots of resources that are marshaled and you keep available for emergencies. So if your plan is emergencies, what was it? It's, I'm thinking about Jeff Foxworthy. You might be a redneck if, if <laughs> this is right. It's a, you might be an amateur project manager if you're planning for lots of emergencies. I think if you find yourself shifting energy and effort away from, from the planning part and really more of strategic contingencies, um, you're probably there's, there's improvement in, in the way you do business. Uh, I also like that. Yeah. I, I know a lot of folks, they just are very comfortable, you know, clinging to a narrative that um, whatever the disruption was in their well-laid plan, well, they're just, you know, you'd never, you, you, there's no way you could know the truck would have been late. Well, yes, you can plan for that. There's no way, you know, that you could have uh, uh, assumed that, you know, it would rain. Well, if you're in Florida from June to November, which is hurricane season, you can set your watch by torrential rains from, you know, three o'clock till seven o'clock at night. Um, and the one I think we can all appreciate is if you are a crisis junkie, right? And the thrill of getting close to failure, just so you can slide into third base or home plate in the 11th hour to, and make it work at the last possible moment. I refer to that as the superhero syndrome, syndrome right? If that's just your standard operating procedure, I'm saying it's time to improve your, your, your PM game. Because you look around at the professionals, Khalil, and you know we're, we are a project management company. That's what we do. And we invest heavily to make sure that little, if any, of those three things happen. Um, and when surprises happen, right, we expect them because we know we know a lot of what we do in our business model is we just we just have to react and things that we know are out of our control. So we have to accept them and we just shift to whatever the next uh, play in the playbook is uh, because we've already planned out how to how to respond to that. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think with those three things, those hallmarks, uh, you might be an amateur project manager if uh, I think it's really summed up by urgency, by just like the tyranny of the urgent yeah. and always 
Great phrase. I trying love to that phrase. save the day at the the last minute, always having you know time available for emergencies. I mean, it's just nothing good happens whenever you're forced into urgent. And I don't want to say nothing good. There's brilliant things, brilliant decisions are made in the heat of the moment sometimes. But if you're relying on that day to day, on project to project, you're really you're really putting yourself in a poor position, and pro- most likely your client that you're serving through the project management that you're doing. It's it's true. I think, I mean, my my current state of thinking is the most exciting thing about professional project management is that I'm trading that adrenaline fueled crisis management excitement uh, of the rescue. Right, I'm trading that in for just good, honest, strategic systems thinking and intentional action. It sounds more boring, but it really is. It's a better experience for the customer. And I think most project management tactics, I think you'd agree, they tend to make heroes out of the people that show up with that last minute save. And what I'm going to be preaching moving forward is um, the real PM work is in not needing the last minute save, right? Isn't that what we're all after, right? It's just a nice, calm, hassle-free experience. That's that's the ultimate gift to the client, I think. Um, hmm. So the quite you know we had some discussions in our in our mid year meeting about um you know what makes up a good PM because we're hiring for at least one possibly two more between now and the oh, end great. of the year can you know what are the skills can it be learned is it just in your DNA to be that kind of a person and consensus was you know th- they it, these are skills um, and there are a set of tools that can be learned. Um, it's not necessarily something that you're born with. Um, so on us to figure out how to document and record that so we can onboard and train people that we think have the, the basic DNA. Um, you know, you, if I talk to my owner friends and some of them are listening, I think there's the really successful organizations, very few of them feel like that they they've, underinvested in project management, right? They, everybody knows these are the MVP players uh, in the business events industry because they're the, they're the get or done people. They're, they may be called an event manager. A lot of times account managers are doing a lot of this work. Um, but I, a, I think a true project manager that has the organization skills, the leadership skills, the client facing communication skills, um, the ability, you know, the ability to, to play well with others, all of that. Um, that's all those things are at the heart of delivering a great experience. I think, yeah, I think great project management is intentional. It's not just showing up as Superman waiting for the, you know, the bad thing to happen. It's, uh, it's, which, it's better than that. So yeah. my two cents on project management. Well, I think if I had to sum up everything that you said, I think, you know, exceptional project management, great project management leads to an incredible experience uh, for your customers, which in turn impacts everything. It, it's what brings them back. It's what brings referrals. It's what allows you to continue uh, investing in project management because of the sales that you get and because of the reputation that you have and so yeah. on and so forth. So definitely an important area to invest in. Um, you should share this just text version of the menu, write an article on LinkedIn if you haven't already. Okay. Yeah. Well, does anybody go to LinkedIn to read anymore? I, or does it all have yeah, to be a visual experience? It happens. It happens. The, the very few. Occasionally someone clicks on something and <laughs> skims through it. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate taking a few minutes to unpack it. I, you know, I just, I thought this was worthy enough to create a short, put it in the library. Um, yeah. Uh, experience builders hope, hope there's some value in this conversation. Yeah. And two more hires this year. So 1-800-CALL. Call Chris immediately. Yes. If you, uh, no, no, we don't take employees from our partners. But if you're not a partner <laughs> and you're listening, we want to talk to you. But I think everybody's in the same boat, Khalil. But um, maybe now everybody's a little bit sharper of what the skill set to look for is and the way you need to show up in the job. If you do it. So. Great. Well, thanks, for, thanks again, Chris. We'll see you soon. Yeah. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Experience Builders podcast. Check out our website in the show notes or visit crewxp.com to learn more.